Hey guys! In this video, I'm going to talk about things I wish I knew before I started painting this house. Because when I bought this house, literally every square inch needed to be painted. Hiring painters is so expensive. Like, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and especially for a whole house, it, it was just out of the question. Um, so even though it, I knew it was going to take some time, I knew I wanted to do it myself. So that's what I did. But in this video, I want to share some tips that I wish I knew before I started painting. And I'd say now, so I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional painter, obviously, but I have painted a lot in this house. So the first thing is prep. And some, if you're like me, you're not going to want to hear this because I'm the type of person that just wants to like jump in, get it done. And I can be in some ways like impulsive with doing projects because I just want to see the result, get it done. But um, one thing I really learned was to take your time with preparation because it makes a huge, huge difference. And to go with that, I want to say about 85% of the paint job is prep. Painting the actual walls, rolling the paint on doesn't really take that much time, but the prep is what's going to make or break. Like the prep is what's going to make your job look a lot better. So prep starts with cleaning the walls and to clean the walls you can just use some regular dish soap but it depends on what they're dirty with if they're kind of greasy then i would recommend using tsp and that's i bought it in like a powder form and you just mix some water in it and you know wipe the walls down with that and that's also really good if um the prior owners or inhabitants like smoked in the house tsp can help clean um, some of that uh, grime off of the walls so I would recommend that um, if they're not too dirty, just use some regular dish soap. Uh, you can also buy something called a deglosser. So that would be good for, say, you're you know, cleaning walls in the kitchen and there's just a lot of grease sort of all over the walls. Or if you're about to paint some kitchen cabinets, then I used a deglosser on my kitchen cabinets before I painted those. Um, so cleaning, cleaning the walls, that's the first thing. Um, and to go along with prep, I want to say it's best if you don't plan to prep and paint all in one day. Because if you do that, if you're like, oh, I got the paint, I'm ready to paint. Let me just get the prep done with. And then I can get to painting and you're doing it all in one day. You're going to skip steps of the prep. You're going to rush and it's not going to be as good. So plan even before you have your paint color picked, you can start prepping the walls. And I feel like that's sort of, that's one way if you lack patience to kind of do that. Don't even buy the paint. Just be like, I'm not going to buy the paint until it's prepped. So cleaning the walls. Um, and then the second thing would also be to, you know, obviously fill any nail holes, look for any dings and um, divots or whatnot, and then patch those with just some spackling. Um, and that's, so when you do that, obviously you're going to need to wait for that to dry and then you're going to sand it down the next day. Also, you might find when you inspect the walls that there's like little bumps from the previous paint job of like paint drips. Sand those all off because if you don't, they're they're going to show through on yours and you might even create some of your own and then it's like going to be drips all over the place. So sand that off. Um, let me see what else I have. Yeah, so just the big thing to remember is like once when you go through and paint the room yourself, everything, all of the um, little like imperfections are going to show through on your paint job too. A fresh coat of paint isn't going to conceal these imperfections, these little nail holes or these um, bumps in the wall. So take your time and just sand it all smooth, fill the holes and, and just get that done because it's going to show through and probably even be amplified when you put a fresh coat of paint on there. Also, don't, so before you're about to paint, you know, you obviously tape around the edges. So if you're not painting the ceiling, you're going to put a, some tape along the ceiling. You can try to cut in, but I guarantee you're still going to get something. So unless you have some white, some ceiling touch up paint, um, just tape, just tape around the ceiling. Um, don't tape around the light switch covers and electrical outlets. Just actually remove those. And you might think, oh, I don't want to remove those. It's annoying. I'll just like take my time painting on it but it will be way faster if you just remove them removing them takes two seconds it's like a little screw so remove them and also your finished will look a lot nicer if you remove them because if you don't and you go to tape around them you're gonna have like brush marks showing like going around it so it's best to just take it off and then you can literally just like roll right up to it and, and it's gonna look much much better um 
Yeah, okay, well, let me see what else. Protect the floors. Uh, definitely want to lay something down on the floors because if not, you're going to be wiping up little drips and stuff all along the way. So you can get uh, a, a drop cloth and um, or you can just lay newspaper or you can use like a plastic um, going on the floor. The better thing about drop cloth over plastic is that the drop cloth kind of like somewhat absorbs the paint drips and then it dries a lot faster versus plastic. When you're walking around the room, you're going to end up stepping on some of those drips and then you're going to get on the bottom of your feet and then you could end up tracking that around the house. And also with the drop cloths, you can cut, if you see a drip, you can sort of fold the cloth over and cover the drip and then that way you're not going to step on it. So I would probably recommend that, but I don't have a drop cloth. I just use plastic because I didn't want to spend the money on a drop cloth. But you could even use like an old bed sheet, like an old you know, bed sheet that you don't mind dedicating to this. Um, get one from the dollar store. So yeah, there's there's options. I'd say a cloth is probably better than plastic. Um, you could just line the edges, like the perimeter of the room with newspaper or cover the whole thing. If you do use newspaper, just make sure that you overlap the newspaper. Don't obviously, because then otherwise it's going to step like, you know, when you're walking on the newspaper, it can separate and then you can get drips in between. So just overlap it. I want to say like, Taping off the ceiling and taping off around all the like, you know, edges takes so much time. Don't do this the same day you're going to paint. I swear, I think taping off, taping everything off takes longer than actually painting. So you're going to end up just tiring yourself out, rushing, skipping. It's not going to be taped perfectly. Even if you tape and you like pull the tape, the tape isn't perfectly aligned. It sort of defeats the purpose of taping. So you have to take your time with this step. Um, and use painter's tape. Don't just use regular um, like white tape because that has more of the adhesive on it and it could actually like when you go to pull and remove it, it could remove some of the uh, paint from the wall. So use painter's tape. It's um, yeah, it's better adhesive. A big thing that I so wish I did and I really regret this is prime your walls first. I didn't prime first when I first bought this house, like I'm not talking about the the den that I just did, but when I first bought this house, I had to paint the entire house, every square inch, every ceiling, every ceiling in this house I had to paint, every wall, every door, like it was all, it all had to get painted. And I wanna say I, so I used um, Benjamin Moore Aura paint, which is their most expensive, like top of the line paint. I love it. It is so easy to work with. It's so thick. It's like, it's self-leveling. It just, it's amazing. I love the paint, but it's so expensive. And the thing is, they tell you that this is paint and primer in one, so you don't need to prime. But the trick to that is, if you don't prime, you're going to end up still needing more coats of that paint. And that paint is very, very expensive. So you are better off just getting a cheap primer from, you know, Home Depot, wherever, priming first, and then go in with your expensive high quality paint. That's what I wish I did. I would have saved so much money if I did that. Um, and even you might think like, so the walls before I painted them in my house were just an off white. They weren't super dark. They were like, they were lighter than, than this behind me. They were sort of like a cream off white color. But so I thought, okay, no big deal. Like I'm painting them white, it's gonna be okay. And I did a couple coats and it looked fine. But one thing I noticed was when I painted the, um, I have this like built-in, um, like built-in bookcase, I guess, and there's a trim around it. So when I painted the trim around the bookcase white, which wasn't the same color of the walls, it was already like a white, that my white paint showed up much more true white on the trim as compared to the walls. So even though I thought I had done enough coats on the walls and it looked fine, the underlying paint was still affecting the color that I was seeing because I was, I guess, going lighter. So keep that in mind is like, you're, you might not get the true color that you wanted to get if you don't prime, unless you're willing to go and do like four coats of paint, which obviously that's going to get really expensive. So I definitely recommend priming. And another thing with priming is I find that after you prime the walls, you can actually see like the like nail holes and like the, the little like things that need to get filled. You can see that a lot better. So make sure to like sit, make sure to plan that after you prime, you are going to inspect the walls again and look it over, sand them, 
fill any more holes you spot. For me, I ended up not even in some of the rooms, I just didn't even attempt to fill the holes or anything until after I primed because all of a sudden they all just popped out and it was just so easy. So that's something that you can take into consideration. Another, another um, little tip that I picked up was when you're about to paint, you know the paint tray that you use to like roll your paint roller in? Um, you can buy these little liners for that and that's great and that makes cleanup way easier but they are kind of expensive so what i ended up doing was just literally wrapping like a garbage bag around my paint tray and then using that and then when i'm done i can just unfold the garbage bag and throw it out and then the other good thing about that is between coats i don't have to worry about the paint in the tray drying out because i again just sort of fold the garbage bag in on itself and keep it still in the tray and then even the next day it's still wet and fine to use so it's kind of like a good trick good um trick for that and that kind of goes along with another tip i picked up was in between coats you don't have to worry about cleaning off your paint brushes and you're going to use brushes when you're doing all of your edging around the top of the room or around you know like um any kind of obstacles in the way window trim and, and all of that you'll need a brush so between coats rather than you know cleaning off your brush each time what you can just use is wrap your brush in a saran wrap that you know that plastic cling wrap it works really good it's just keep all the moisture in so i've just been wrapping my brush in the saran wrap and it'll still be wet like two days later so even if you don't get around to the second coat or the third coat for a couple of days your brush will still be fine and then when you're fully finished the job then go ahead and clean it off and yeah that saves a lot of time right when you are rolling on the paint you might feel inclined to like quickly roll it because you just want to hurry up and get the job done but don't do that because when you click when you quickly roll it ends up having like little tiny splatters of paint sort of fly off the roller and they land around the room they can land on the walls and it's just not a good idea so make sure when you're rolling on the paint you roll it nice and slow and just do a smooth you know take your time listen to music put a podcast on have a youtube video playing in the background just take your time with that don't rush the rolling okay i think that's it i think that's all the tips i sort of wanted to pass on to you and i hope that was helpful for you um yeah, these are just things I wish I knew before I started and it would have saved me a little bit of time, saved me a little bit of trouble or improved my finished results. Saved me money, actually. The primer would have saved me a lot of money. So that's a big one. Um, but overall, don't be intimidated by painting. It's not a big deal. If you mess up, you can go over it again. If you pick... Actually, I do want to make another video on tips before picking a paint color because I definitely messed up on this a lot and I've yeah so if you want if you'd be interested in me making a video on tips before picking a paint color let me know in the comments and I will do that and otherwise I hope this video was helpful for you and if it was I would really appreciate if you could hit the like button and if you're not subscribed then please subscribe so you can catch future videos okay I will see you on the next video